So you have this great idea and you want to take this idea and move it forward. You want to become entrepreneurial. How about if I give you six tips to help you to achieve this goal? Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And today I want to talk about six basics that you want to embrace if you want to take your idea from the drawing board and put it out there and become an entity yourself. So let's go over six basics and I'm going to reference one of the first companies that I worked with, a company called Copa, that took these six steps and allowed me to go from being somebody that answered a blind ad in the newspaper to becoming a divisional vice president within that company. So let's talk about what it takes and I'm going to relate to you some of the experiences that I've had and I've had I've worked with other companies that didn't do this and this is why this company is very near and dear to my heart because they were the ones that put me on the road that I wanted to pursue. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is to create a community. Well, with Copa, there was a marketing firm and the community that they were creating was, let's, you're fulfilling the need. Of course, all entrepreneurs, they see an issue, they see a problem, and they have a way to solve it better than it's being solved right now. The, the issue that Copa was solving was that people are not particularly very good savers and they didn't protect themselves in the event that something happened so that their family would be able to go on even if they weren't there to help. So they had a product that, you know, because three things can happen to you in life. You can live, you can die, you can become disabled. They developed a product that was able to take care of these three different possibilities and the community that was created was here you are working with this company and you're helping middle America go from somebody that doesn't save anything to somebody that saves as little as 10 bucks a week and by the time they get to retirement they're going to be able to live a comfortable life so it starts with the concept the concept of helping the community that's what Copa did, what is your concept? Second thing, foster innovation. Now, a blueprint was developed by this company so that people would go out and be able to talk to Middle America on a one-by-one -one basis or a, a family basis where you'd be talking to both the husband and the wife. And this blueprint gave a step-by-step-by-step-by-step step 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 process that was trained, was worked upon, was reviewed, and it put you in a position where you could be successful. But, so what is innovation? Well, I'll give you a couple of different examples. When I was out in the field, one of the innovations that I used was I would loosen my, my shirt, put a pencil behind my ear, and knock on a door and be very relaxed about it. You know, that was my innovation. When I got to management, I would see, and, and this one lady named Devery was very innovative. She, what she would do is she would compete with her office, which was the Anaheim office, with other offices around the country because competition equals cash. And one of the things that she did is she took on uh, this particular week our Seattle office and so she had all over her office rattle Seattle rattle Seattle and she gave her team a name and the name of her team was the Celtics only instead of C-E-L-T-I-C-S it was S-E-L-L-T-I-C-S -L -L the Celtics little innovations little things to get people motivated that's the, the type of activity that you want to do if you have a particular blueprint for success 
Come up with innovations to motivate people. Come up with innovations to make you just a little bit different than everybody else while still adhering to the basic principles, the foundations of the things that are going to make you successful. Always remember to ask for and provide feedback. You need to be always, as the leader, looking to see where you can fine-tune people, just a little nuance here or there. All right? And, it, it, and the other thing is, of course, you want to be the recipient of feedback. Now, why is feedback the breakfast of champions? Because when you give somebody feedback, and once again, when you're giving feedback, it should be doled out in the, in the ratio of five or six to one positive feedback versus negative feedback. Because if you do it, the, op the ratio is reversed which many companies do, the only time they talk to you is when they're telling you you're doing something wrong, is every time you get approached, the first thing on your mind is, uh-oh, what did I do now? As opposed to, if you're getting positive feedback, you're glad to see the person giving the feedback, and you're reassured that you are a valuable member of the team. And when you're giving positive feedback, you're saying, we can't get this job done without you and I just want to give you the feedback and the other thing is it gives reassurance to the people that are performing the functions that you need to have performed that they are doing the right thing and it gives them more confidence so when somebody feels like they're part of the team that the job is essential that they're doing the right thing their mind their mindset is going to be in the right space and they're going to start to look for ways that they can improve upon the process. Another thing that's critical when you have your own business, when you're starting your own entrepreneurial activity, is you've got to provide training, of course, and you've got to chunk it down into small parts. and. When people come to a job, one of the most important things, and Eli, I've mentioned this to you many, many times because you're in the position now, you know, you're a teenager and very soon you're going to be out there in the real world. When you go to that job interview, the first thing on your mind should not be how much money can I make right now. The thing on your mind should be am I in a position by working with this company, by working with this group of people, where I can advance and improve and become greater than I am right now. So the thing you want to focus on is two things. Number one, of course, you want your company to be productive. You know, if it's a sales organization, you want to make a lot of sales. But remember that a person working within a company, when they see an opportunity to advance, they are going to work harder. It's a challenge. People embrace challenges. All, and one of the things that COPA did is they said the, the ad that I answered was to be the manager, a sales manager of my own office. And they had a step by step by step by step blueprint how you advance up the road to become the manager of your office. And they gave a new title with each position. You were a trainee, you were a production aid, production aid, you were a field support leader, unit, a unit production manager. All these different titles they would give you, and each time they had a title, there was a new responsibility, a new challenge. And you have to coach people each step of the way, and when, when you do that, and they embrace the vision of A, the company, and B, their own prospects of advancement, that is when they will be the most productive and all in. Is that what you want with your personal endeavor? The fifth point, always show appreciation. You know, one of the things that this company would do is they had these unbelievably great trips. We I traveled all over the world with this company from production. First as a salesperson, you know, for the first, you know, two years or so, you know, what, when you produce this, you went to, we went to Germany, we went to London, we went to the 
to the Bahamas, we went to Canada, we, we went to Rio de Janeiro, and these were all things that were out there and they painted the picture and they showed films and videos and of course you got to take you know your significant other with you. I took um, a girlfriend or two, I took my dad one trip on a, a cruise down the a, a cruise and I took him to Rio de Janeiro all right I remember thinking at the time that uh, of Elvis in Rio I was thinking of Melvin in Rio that was my father's name Melvin in Rio all right and so the point is show your appreciation and there's other ways to show appreciation it's not always monetary you know take someone out for you know a meal take someone out you know for a beverage and show them that you care but show appreciation to the people for the job that they're performing. When you do that, the bond becomes greater, the bond becomes tighter. And ultimately, the sixth point that your objective here is, is to empower your team to boost your business. In the process of developing people as they're advancing up the line in your organization, you want to give them more and more and more responsibility. Now sometimes you as the leader, as the more experienced, the more, as I like to refer to myself, seasoned individual, see something that, well, there's a little bit of a monkey wrench in that. It, it, I don't think it's going to work so well. If it's not something that's going to be a major catastrophe, let the person perform and learn from their own actions. And then you can sit down with them and say, okay, let's take a look and see where there was a breakdown here. And then you can point it out. And, pe and that's a very valuable way to learn life lessons. But the, the main point is also that once people have reached a level of achievement, that you no longer have to micromanage them in all aspects of the business let you know go over with them what you want the final outcome to be and let them make their own game plan because somebody will work a lot harder with their game plan than they will with one that is forced upon them they will work harder to make sure that it's successful it's the same th it's it's similar not exactly the same thing but it's similar to raising a child in the beginning, you micromanage every little step of that child's growth. And as time goes along and they develop skills, one of the things is you give them more and more responsibility until you get to the point where they say, Hey, Dad, come on, let me do it. Not that, you ever done, not that you've ever said that, Eli. All right? But you, fo you follow my drift. All right? So you want to empower your team to boost your business and the way that you do that is by giving them responsibility but always remember to expect to inspect and inspect to expect which means go over clearly what the ultimate expectation is and inspect the results to see that you got what you were expecting so those are our six tips uh, create a community, foster innovation, ask for and provide feedback, provide training and coaching opportunities, show your appreciation, and empower your team so that you can boost your business. And because we'll never end an entrepreneurial session on a philosophical note, get out there and take charge! I'm Eli's dad.